Good afternoon, everyone. It's about going on 4 o'clock Central Time here in Pineville, Missouri. Um, because Tom Adams chose to not further do Bible studies with me, um, Mark has agreed to pick up where Tom left off. So we're continuing tonight in the 10th chapter of John. And I've asked Mark to read. We're just going to get try to get through 20 verses tonight. So I've asked Mark to read verses 1 down through 20. Glad to have you with me, Mark. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not, we're going to have to read loud so they can hear. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door. And the sheep pulled the swine that come away, but the same the thief and the robber. He that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Then the poor opener to the sheep for his voice, and calls his own name, sheep by name, or he them out. When he put forth his own sheep, he built before them. The sheep call him to know his voice with them out. Stranger, and not fall but will flee from him, for they know not to look for strangers. His cardinal spake Jesus unto them, they spoke not what things they were which spake unto them, but not the same. Then the Jews then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily I say unto you, I have the door of the sheep. All that ever came to send me were thieves and robbers. The sheep did not hear them. I am the door of my me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He should go in and out and find pasture. He cometh not for the seal of the kill and destroy I am son in my aunt wife. He might have it more fun way. I am a good shepherd. Good shepherd gives his life to the sheep. He is a hireling, not the shepherd. He oh, the sheep are not he the wolf, but he leaves the sheep. We at the wolf take a bit, share the sheep. Fire me, flee it, because he is a hire and cure not the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and bone of mine. Father knows me, so I father. I lay down my life to sheep, other sheep I have. God has told him all from my spirit and makes sure my voice. She one soul and one shepherd, therefore does my father love me. So lay down my life, so I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. I tired to lay it down. So I tired to take it again, and she can have to my father. There was a vision, therefore, to get among the Jews who saved him. Many of them said he had the devil. Is bad. Why are you getting pretty much okay? Good. That's where I want to stop. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm going to probably be giving you some other passages to look up during the study, Mark, so keep your Bible there handy. Um, well, I just want to say this. I have looked at this passage many, many times, and every time I read through it, I find something new in it that is something maybe I hadn't quite seen before. What's that show us is that we never should get tired of studying the Bible. He starts with verse 10 and he says, Verily, verily. Verily, verily means um, with emphasis. With emphasis. With emphasis I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Now I've done messages on this before, and I've stated that there are many thieves and robbers as it relates to the gospel. There are some that uh, will say they believe the gospel, but they deny it 
in word, thought, and deed because they don't subscribe to what Christ said. <clears throat> there are other people that are in other religions that deny the Bible and they deny uh, what Christ said about himself and so that makes them thieves and robbers. Let me give you some examples. The Buddhists. Okay. Um, the uh, the Muslims. Uh, the Roman Catholics. The Jesuits. The Jews. We are not America, you know, they keep saying that America is a Judeo-Christian nation. There's more, it's not Christian. They should say it's a, a Judeo-Roman Catholic nation. Confucianism, um, Hinduism, just think how many Hindus are over in India. Okay? They have cows running around on the streets. <laughs> he that entereth not by the door, who's the door? Jesus Christ is the door. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He is the door. He that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Jesus Christ calls himself the great shepherd. David called Christ the shepherd when he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Well, it says in verse 3, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. Jesus Christ says in another place, My sheep know my voice, and they follow me, and no man can pluck them out of my hand. And no man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. Verse 4, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. Notice that. He putteth forth his own sheep, and he goeth before them. How is it that he put it in forth? Well, we're told in another passage in John 6, 37, all that the Father has given me will come to me. He put it his own sheep forth. How is it that he goes before them? Well, Jesus Christ has always been. He's eternal. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He chose his sheep before they were created. He chose them before the foundation of the world. That's how he goes before them. It says the sheep follow him. They follow him because he has put his faith in the, in the sheep. He's the author and finisher of our faith. With the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus Christ is before all things, and by him all things consist. Verse 5. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Why is it that Rosette and I have been to a hundred churches and, and have, have taken a run from those churches, taken flight from those churches? Because we don't want to hear the voice of strangers. We want to hear the voice of the Bible, what the Bible has to say. We're not interested in what strangers have to say. Verse 6. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not that what things that were which he spake unto them. Isn't that interesting? The only way anyone can understand what Christ says is that he opens their eyes and their ears so they can see and they can hear the truth of the gospel. Verse 6, I'm sorry, 
verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, in other words, with emphasis, with emphasis, with emphasis, with emphasis, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. A lot of people are proclaiming another door. They're proclaiming the door of free will. They're proclaiming the door of filling out a decision card. Billy Graham used to call his program the hour of decision. They're proclaiming um, a social gospel. They're proclaiming a works gospel as the door. You do enough works, the door will open to you. What does Jesus what is Jesus' response to these fake doors? His response is Verse eight All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. There's another place that Jesus says, they will say in the name, didn't we prophesy in thy name? Didn't we do all these great works? And he will say unto them, I never knew you. The only one that Christ knows are the ones that he foreknew and the ones that he chose before the foundation of the world. He was slain from the foundation of the world. There was a covenant between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that Christ would come and that he would give his life a ransom for many. He came to save his people from their sins and he saved every one of them that he came to save. Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, Mark, I would like for you to look at John 14:6. John 14, 6, and read that for us. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. pretty exclusive. You know, Michael Savage can get on his radio broadcast and say all paths lead to God. It's like a spoke in the middle of the wheel and all the spokes lead to the same place. No, they do not. No, they do not. Allah is not Jesus Christ. Buddha is not Jesus Christ. The Hindu God is not Jesus Christ. The Armenian God is not Jesus Christ. Christ. The Roman Catholic God is not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now, Mark, I want you to read Ephesians 2.18. Ephesians 2.18. Ephesians 2.18. Try to read loud so they can hear you, okay? I don't think they can hear you. The fruit of the both of access by one spirit and the Father. Okay. For through him, Jesus Christ, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Notice there's not multiple spirits mentioned here. There's only one Holy Spirit. There's only one eternal Son of God, and there's only one Father, and that is the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 1st 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Satan is not only the prince and the power of the air. He is, by the way, 
he is a thief. He is a thief. And the thief, Satan, is going about seeking whom he may devour. But he cannot devour the elect children of God. It's impossible because we're told in Romans 8 that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Okay, verse... Uh, verse uh, 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life to the sheep. Notice here he does not say the good shepherd gives his life for all men without exception. He does not say that the good shepherd gives his life for everybody. He said his he says that the, this is Jesus Christ speaking here now, by the way. This is Jesus Christ speaking. Jesus Christ says, I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. For the sheep. That's contrary to what 99% of the churches are teaching. Mark, I want you to look up Isaiah 40 and read for us verse 11. Isaiah 40, verse 11. Jesus Christ himself said in his word that he giveth his life for the sheep. Not for the reprobate, not for the goat, okay? Not for the wolves in sheep's clothing. He gives his life for the sheep. Isaiah 40, verse 11. He shall feed his flock like the shepherd. It doesn't say he shall feed all men without exception. He shall feed his flock like the shepherd. He shall gather the lamb with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. What a beautiful passage of scripture there. It solidifies, the prophet Isaiah solidifies what Jesus Christ is saying to him. Verse 12, But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. How many times have we been in fellowship with someone and all of a sudden something has happened and all of a sudden there's a division among the sheep and they're scattered. I've seen it over and over and over and over again. And usually it happens because someone in that group decides they're going to do something that is contrary to the Bible, instruction from the Bible. Mark, while we're, um, I'm reading through here, I want you to look up 2 Timothy 2.19. 2 Timothy 2.19. Verse 13, The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. How many times have I had people say, Take me off your email. Remove me from your email list. They flee. They flee. They don't want to hear the voice of the Word of God. They want to. They want to uphold um, what they call Christian psychology, or they want to uphold Christian uh, answers to trauma, or they want to uphold the Arminian doctrine, or they want to uphold uh, women preachers women ministers, lots of things that we want to uphold. Um, 
and so they'll send me emails and they'll say, take me off your email list. We no longer want a fellowship with you. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. He doesn't say here, he knows all men without exception as an in intimate knowledge and knowing. He does know who the reprobate are, but he does not have a relationship with the reprobate. But when he says he knows that he's the good shepherd and knows his sheep, he means that he loves them and he knows them intimately. And, uh, you know, we don't, we don't proclaim the universal atonement. We don't believe in potential salvation. We believe in actual salvation that was, a, was accomplished at the cross and Christ said it is finished. We don't proclaim that there's a potential for all men to be saved. No, we do not. We believe that is, uh, is heresy. It's heresy. The Bible says after the first and second admonition of a heretic to reject, to reject, now, I've asked Mark to look up 2 Timothy 2.19, and um, I want him to read it uh, loudly if he can. 2 Timothy 2.19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured. Isn't that good to know? Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. This is exactly what he's saying here. I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you have been drawn into sin, drawn away of your own lust and enticed, God will be, if you're one of his elect, God will be faithful to bring you back to repentance. Because he's placed the faith. His faith within you. He says in the next verse, there, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and verse, some to honor and some to dishonor. Are you a vessel of honor? Or are you a vessel of wrath that is for destruction? Which are you? Which am I? We are commanded to make our calling and election sure. Okay, verse 15. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. He says it again. For double emphasis. I lay down my life for the sheep. No. He doesn't say I lay down my life for all men without exception. For every man, woman, girl, and boy on the earth. No, he does. He says I lay down my life for the sheep. He says in verse 16, Other sheep have I which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. What's he speaking of here? Is he speaking of aliens from another planet? No, he's not. He's speaking of the Gentiles. He's speaking of the Gentiles. In the Old Testament prophecies, it says that he came to be a light to the Gentiles. And now he says in the book of Acts, we find as it relates to the Gentiles, that as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. What it says. 
That's the that's the fulfillment of what Christ is saying here. Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Where's that found? It's found in Acts thirteen forty eight. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believe as many who were predestinated to adoption, as many who were chosen in him from the foundation of the world, as many has, who were elected unto grace, the recipients of God's sovereign grace, were quickened by his spirit. Verse 17, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. Notice here that Jesus Christ says that he laid his own life down. Laid his own life down. It was already a decree before the foundation of the world that Jesus Christ would come and die for his people. And he says in Acts again, by the determinate counsel, you by wicked hands have taken and slain. But what was the first part of it? By the determinate counsel of God. Verse 18, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down on myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. And Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He fulfilled what Christ said here when he says, I lay down my life that I might take it again. He rose up out of that grave. Verse 19. There was a division, therefore, again amongst the Jews, among the Jews for these things. And many of them said, He hath the devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Many of people have said that about me. I got an email just, I think it was this morning, from a guy. And I've been sending him many verses, scriptures regarding these great doctrines of grace. And you know what he said? He sent me an email, and he said, take me off your email. He said, I could never believe this. What you believe, I could never believe this. In other words, what he's saying is the same thing my mom used to say. You know what I believe. I know she believed in the free will of man. She didn't believe in the doctrines of grace any more than this fellow. And he said, I could, you know, I could never, I could never go along with your view. You know what I did? I responded and I said, it's not a view, it's biblical fact. It's not a view, it's not my view, it's a biblical fact. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of the first 20 verses in the uh, 10th chapter of John. I hope this has been edifying. Um, and I hope that uh, you will do your own study when you get a chance in the 10th chapter of John. Now, just by way of announcement, Mike Orr and myself are going to be starting a men's fellowship conference call on Wednesday night. If you have an interest in these great doctrines, Mark will be joining us as well, my son. And if you enjoy these great doctrines that we talked about today, um, you're welcome to join us. You'll have to send me a email. And the best way to send me an email is go to LarryWPhillips.com go to the contact section and just send me an email saying I would like to be a part of the Men's Wednesday Night Fellowship and I will send you a link. It starts at 6 o'clock Central Time um, on Wednesday night. So Mike Orr and I will be doing that. We will be having a topic every Wednesday night about what we're going to be discussing and I try to send that out in advance 
couple criteria or protocol for housekeeping purposes for the call. Uh, the call is not for the purpose of strife and contention. That's not the purpose of the call. The purpose of the call is to uh, revel in the Word of God and edify and build up those in the faith. Women are not invited to the call. Women are not supposed to be talking about doctrinal issues amongst the men. And so, uh, if you're a woman, please don't call in because you will just be, um, your mic and video will be shut off. Okay? Ask your husband at home if you have a question. Okay? So that's pretty much it for today. God bless. And we'll see you. On Tuesday afternoon, Mark and I will be continuing our studies in Colossians. We're ready for, I believe, Colossians 2. God bless.